I'm Dana Now from the University of Maryland, and I'm going to talk about GT PyHop, a hierarchical planner that plans for both goals and tasks. GT PyHop is based on PyHop, a planner released in 2013 that has a very simple implementation, less than 150 lines of Python code. The planning algorithm it uses is a simplified version of the shop algorithm. States are represented as Python objects that contain state variables. Actions and methods are ordinary Python functions. Each action modifies the current state. Each method returns a task list, which is a sequence of actions and tasks. GT PyHop is an extended version of PyHop that plans for both tasks and goals. Actions and methods still are ordinary Python functions. Some methods are for tasks, others are for goals. Each method returns a to-do list, which is a sequence of actions, tasks, and goals. Both planners are available as open source software at the URLs given at the bottom of the page. In GT PyHop, states are Python objects that hold state variable bindings. And as an example, in the blocks world, the state variables include the positions of blocks, whether they are clear, and whether the robot hand is holding anything or not. Here is an example of a state in which block A is on the table, block B is on the table, block C is on A, A is not clear, B is clear, C is clear, and the robot hand is empty. Actions are written as Python functions. For example, the blocks world has four standard actions, pick up, put down, stack, and unstack. Here's a definition of the pick up action for picking up a block from the table. The arguments include the current state and the block to be picked up. If the position of the block is the table and the block is clear and the hand is empty, that if test is the preconditions. If the preconditions are satisfied, then the effects consist of modifying the current state and returning it. Finally, at the end, we have a declaration that tells GT PyHop that this is indeed an action. The other actions can be uh, defined similarly. A task is represented as an end tuple, including the task name and its arguments list. For example, suppose we let take of x be the task of taking a clear block x that may be either on another block or the table. Here is a method for that task. The arguments consist of the current state and the block to be taken. Um, this if test is the precondition. If it is satisfied, then this if test determines which of two different to-do lists get returned. One in the case where the block is on the table and the other if the block is on top of another block. Finally, this declaration um, tells GT PyHop that this is a task method and it's relevant for all tasks whose task name is take. As an example of applying this method, if we have the task take B and apply it in this state here, it returns the to-do list pickup of B. If we have take C, then since C is on top of A, it'll return an unstack to-do list instead. It's easy to write a similar input method for the task of putting X down either on another block or on the table. A goal can be represented as an object that's similar to a state, except that it gives desired state variable bindings rather than current ones. For example, here we have the goal of getting block A onto block B and block B onto block C. At right, we have a goal method for this kind of goal. It's an implementation of a well-known block stacking algorithm. The input consists of the current state and the goal to be achieved. It goes through a complicated computation in order to decide which of four different to-do lists is the one that it wants to return. Um, most of the to-do lists include both tasks and goals. This goal at the end is the same that was given at the as the input. And this is invoked recursively in order to ensure that everything gets accomplished. Finally, at the end, we have a declaration that says that this is a method for goals. As an example, suppose we uh, have the planning problem consisting of the initial state given earlier, this configuration of blocks, and the goal that was given above up here. Um, if we use this goal method for that, it's going to produce the obvious plan. Um, unstack C from A, put it on the table, pick up B, put it on top of C, and then pick up A, put it on top of B, as shown right here. 
planning algorithm is based on the one in PyHop, but augmented to plan for goals. It decomposes each task into a to-do list using a task method, and it decomposes each goal using a goal method. In the case of goals, it also adds a check whether the decomposition produces a plan that achieves the goal that we're trying to achieve. And if the goal hasn't been achieved, then it fails so that GTPyHop will backtrack. Whenever there's any kind of a failure, GTPyHop backtracks to the nearest task or goal in order to look for a different method. And if there isn't a different method for that task or goal, then it backtracks even further. Here's a comparison between GTPyHop and some techniques used in some other hierarchical planners. I'm going to use it as an example, the task of transporting a container C from one location Y to another location Z. Um, here's a, an HTN method for doing that, um, written as pseudocode with these preconditions and these subtasks. In most hierarchical planners, that's going to be written in a specialized planning language that the planner understands and can reason about. Um, often there can be free variables not mentioned in the task. For example, what robot are you going to use in order to transport the container? And where does that robot start at? Depending on how many robots you have in your domain, you may be able to backtrack over multiple instantiations of this method if the first one doesn't work. Uh, furthermore, the planner knows in advance what the subtasks are going to be. So that can help with things like implementing heuristic functions. In the case of GTPyHop, the method is implemented as an ordinary Python function. Um, one problem with that is the planner doesn't know what the subtasks are in advance because they're embedded in the Python code. So how are you going to reason about those subtasks in order to implement heuristic functions? We think that we may have some ways to do that, but we're not sure yet. Another problem is how to backtrack over multiple possibilities, multiple possible instantiations, if there aren't any free variables to instantiate. In some cases, one can work around that. In other cases, one can come up with a way to do it. But those both tend to be special case and rather awkward. On the other hand, there's some advantages. You can do arbitrarily complex reasoning in the form of Python code in order to evaluate preconditions and to generate subtasks. And furthermore, you don't need to learn a specialized planning language in order to do that. This latter may not be a big deal for AI planning researchers, but for people who are not planning researchers or may not even be uh, AI researchers at all, that can be a big deal. And that includes, for example, most of the users of the original PyHop planner. In summary, GDPyHop extends the PyHop planner to handle goals. Using the terminology in this paper, what it does is totally ordered goal task network planning without sharing and task insertion. GTPyHop also includes several other features, including support for debugging and domain development. There's some details about that in the paper, as well as integration with an acting algorithm. In our ongoing work, we're looking at some temporal planning and multi-agent planning concerns. And there's also a related presentation in this workshop entitled Integrating Planning and Acting with a Reentrant HTN Planner. This is a reentrant version of GTPyHop for dealing with things like execution errors. Thank you for listening.